Right, so welcome to day three of the summer school. Um, we're from the East Science Center, um, and today we'll be basically talking about interactive geospatial analysis at HPC scales using HPC systems. And we'll be kind of introducing you to a, a small framework that, we, that we've that we been working on that allows you to do this with uh, some degree of ease. Um, so you can recognize us in case you haven't bumped into us yet. Uh, I'm Matt Hotus. Um, Francesco Nintino is sitting in front here and Pranav is helping you out in the back there. So um, yeah, we're all what we call research software engineers at the eScience Center. What that equates to is people who have done research, generally PhD, postdoc, and decided that they have a strong interest in the technical side of um, computer assisted research and are kind of focusing on doing that and working together with researchers from the Netherlands, but in consortia also internationally to facilitate uh, research projects by using cutting edge uh, ICT technologies. Um, very briefly for today, we have a collaborative document. No, I can, I can point that. Um, so this is the URL. If you go here, I'll let you briefly let you like sink, sink that in. Maybe you want to type it in. Can I get a show of hands like when people are at the site? Okay, so it's just today's date with uh, CRS at the end of it. So this is a collaborative document. So you can all edit this. Um, and it basically is supposed to accompany you during the day. So it has um, some setup instructions at the top. Uh, those are there more for your reference. So it kind of covers again the steps that you were supposed to do to set things up. And then it also already has the steps for what we'll be doing in the interactive session this morning. So you don't need to look at that now if you don't want to, but it's there for your reference should you kind of get lost somewhere. And um, there's also the agenda. We'll come to that in a second, the presentation, roll call. You know, if you have time, like just enter who you are, what you're doing, what your interests are. It helps us to kind of connect and, and understand the, the people we're working with. And then there are collaborative notes. So as the, as the interactive sessions go along, we'll be adding notes here for you and the commands that are being issued. So you can like come back and reference this if you get stuck somewhere. Um, yeah. So then I'll go back to this. All right. Okay. So that's the collaborative document. Um, schedule for today, it's a little bit different than from what's on the on the website, but not a huge change. So we'll start out by some intro and the housekeeping stuff that we're doing now. Then we'll have a presentation on the HPC system we'll be using by um, uh, by someone from SURF, the, the Dutch national um, infrastructure provider for supercompute. And then we'll go into um, High performance computing and the open stack uh, Earth observation software system that that facilitates using HPC and the framework or is that that we have to kind of connect the two in an easy to use way. Uh, so we'll look at that in a little bit like what what the ideas behind it are where what the ecosystem is like uh, then go to deployment of the framework so that's where you'll actually be doing it hands on. We have a semi pre configured environment for you so that's what you've been getting access to now, we'll just do that. And then you should quickly have access and then we'll go through a hands-on session on using Dask. Um, so more to that, then coffee, then we'll go to data retrieval. Like how, do, but uh, the, both the, the, the standards that we're using to facilitate data retrieval as well as the storage system. And we'll do a hands-on session with that. Then we'll have some lunch and then we'll go to scaling workflows. Like how do you do real world applications at scale with what we've just shown you? coffee and then we'll go to a kind of like you can continue working on the examples we give but we'll also be showing you how to deploy this on your local system so that will be an in-depth walkthrough of how you do this not on the system that we're letting you use now but if you have access to a supercompute system you can just get this tool off of the internet off of github and use it yourself um yeah and then we'll wrap it up we'd like some feedback and have a discussion with you and then we'll end the day before five so the afternoon should be okay-ish so then you'll have some time there as well again Okay, who are we? Um, yeah, we're the Netherlands eScience Center. Uh, we are uh, an independent foundation. We've been in existence roughly 10 years now. We are funded by the Dutch Research Council and the Supercompute um, Organization of the Netherlands. And as I said, we're, we're basically here to empower researchers 
um, to do science with computers. Um, and that through all disciplines. So we focus on Earth observation and remote sensing, also going into other fields, but the, the center as a whole just covers everything. Um, and specifically, so we do that by actually having collaborative projects with researchers where we build software with them. But we also do uh, digital expertise building. So we actually run trainings and workshops. So something like this, we also offer on a, on a semi-regular basis in the Netherlands to all interested researchers there. They can just sign up for free and get taught stuff about going from the basics of using Git and Python to advanced things like parallel computing and uh, deep learning methods for, uh, for research. And now we're community building and networking because we also like to spread the, we're all about open science and about making software that people can use. And that's not just the Dutch. So everyone out there should be able to do good science. Um, and so we hope that you can use this tool for your research as well. Um, yeah, for the few Dutch in the audience, do check out the webpage. There's open calls, there's training. So yeah, you, can, um, you can see whether there's something there for you. And for everyone else, do also have a look as well. Maybe you can find some way to, to use materials or so and fit in. So that, that'd be cool. Um, and you can always reach out to us. And we'll be sharing the slides as well. So our email addresses are there and the contact details as well. Um, right, so what, why are we doing today? Why are we going beyond personal computing? Well, I can, it's kind of, we've, we've heard it enough before. Big data renders local storage and processing resources inadequate. Um, simply, you cannot do the kind of work you want to do on your laptop, on your workstation. You need more processing power. Um, and that means that you need them both for, for applications like AI, but simply also just crunching the amount of data that you need for, let's say, large-scale analyses over significant spatial extents, which is also an interesting topic, not just doing cutouts, but doing actually encompassing spatial analysis, uh, also in itself simply requires this amount of storage and compute. So as examples here, this is a mosaic of the Copernicus Sentinel, Sentinel data. So this is just satellite imaging of all of Africa. And if you remember that you can fit almost all of the other continents into Africa, you can imagine how much surface area that is and how much data that is at 10 meters resolution. Um, but this here is, a, is an, another example of a very big data set. This is the Algemene Hoogtekaart Nederland, which is just the Dutch um, ministry that kind of keeps track of water, an important thing in the Netherlands. <laughs> um, does a LIDAR survey of the entire country to, to know how high, what the heights are. So this is basically a visualization of a LIDAR point cloud. And this is what it looks like when you zoom into it. All of these individual points are LIDAR laser returns. And this is the kind of resolution you have, but then it covers the entire country. So we're talking just this data set alone is hundreds of billions of points, and you're talking easily terabytes of compressed data. And you can use all of this to do science with as well. So eco ecologists love doing this kind of thing because they can actually understand habitat structures at meter scale over the country. So these are the kind of data sets that also fall under remote sensing, not just satellites. And this is also what you need to be able to use um, and that you need the processing sources for. So yesterday we talked about cloud, basically the big commercial providers, Azure, Google, Amazon. This little logo here that no one knows because I didn't know it existed until I was making the presentation either is the Surf Research Cloud. So some national centers, national providers also offer cloud services or act as a portal to commercial cloud services. But the other side of this coin are the national and regional institutional HPC offerings that are out there. So things like the Barcelona Supercompute Center, uh, Udi Supercompute Center, Surf in the Netherlands, but also this is Delft Blue, it just has a nice logo. So the Technical University in Delft in the Netherlands actually has their own supercomputer that they built. It's called Delft Blue, and you can use it if you're a researcher there. So there's quite an offering of things out there that you could be using, not just the cloud. And the cloud has its advantages, but this also does. And we can look at that briefly. So if you contrast high performance compute systems or high throughput compute systems, which is where part of this trend is also going. So you can distinguish the two. High performance is the classic, I can run simulations on it. I don't need much storage. I just generate my data by running complex calculations. High throughput compute is I need to do a lot of calculations on a lot of data. So I also need to be able to sluice data through my system. So you're getting to a stage where there is sometimes a kind of a dichotomy between the two. Some systems can be optimized for just performant compute. 
and some for throughput as well. And many systems are actually now being built in a, in a hybrid fashion that they can accommodate both, both use cases. So in terms of the advantages of these types of systems, they're kind of no cost. Of course, they cost money, but generally they are behind a kind of merit-based system. So you submit a proposal outlining the research you would like to do. And if that's deemed meritous, then you get time. So it doesn't cost you. You don't have to write a grant application, get funding from a central body, or get your credit card somewhere, or convince your group leader to get the credit card or the money somewhere. They're generally fairly flexible in, in their configuration, um, which also comes from the fact that they have a very high level of support. So there's a dedicated support staff for these centers. So you, there's always someone to talk to, and it doesn't cost money, like support sometimes does in the cloud. Um, they run off of very well-established file systems. So it's nothing new in the sense you don't need S3 buckets, that kind of thing, which are all great technologies. You can use them, but this is just a mounted file system, right? You know what you're getting into. It's, it's fairly easy to use. And then there's like the highly optimized IO infrastructure um, that, that these high throughput compute systems have, which are also beneficial. And it's compatible with open science paradigm entirely. Uh, because it's up to it's it's open, it's public. Uh, it's up to you to specify what you need, but then you can also share your setups. Um, you can share all of the details, so your research becomes reproducible. So this uh, this tackles the reproducibility crisis that um, that science is is encountering. There are also disadvantages, of course. You need to get the data. So less, yesterday, NASA very impressively showed how much data they have, and yeah, you wouldn't want to mirror their entire archive. But let's say you want to do something with a very large part of it, um, and you're running on a European server rather than US West 2, or you do need to egress your data, then maybe you do that egress once, and you put it on your local mass storage system that these centers also have, and then you can simply use it. Um, there can be a slight delay between your request and getting access. It's like you, need, you do need to write that proposal. So SURF has a turnaround time of roughly two weeks. So you, like, you say you need it, write your proposal two weeks so you get resources for a year then. Um, however, there's a limited amount of convenience functions. So you need to do more yourself. If you're thinking like of Google Earth Engine or maybe Sentinel Hub, there are like convenience functions there that do mosaicing for you. <laughs> to use this, you're gonna have to do it yourself or you're gonna have to make a product and then download it and work on it. So you can also do like a, a hybrid approach. So, they have their pros and cons, and I think I hope that we've also made a convincing case for why using HPC is something that can be beneficial to you. And today we're going to be focusing on the use of, of HPC systems. Um, so yeah, so the goals for today are basically introducing you to the this RS dot framework that we that we set up, and mainly like in terms of concrete goals, we want to show you some of the tools for scaling geospatial big data workflows. And I put geospatial in brackets here on purpose because lots of this stuff is just applicable to any kind of big data. It doesn't have to be geospatial. Um, and basically show you how to use this, uh, this framework and deploy it on a local HPC system so that you can use it yourself for your research moving forward. But before I get into the uh, for the details of this, um, it, maybe it's nice to hear something about the system you'll be running on today. So we have uh, Lodovic Nauta as a guest presenter from Surf, um, and he'll be telling you something about the Surf system um, and what uh, Surf as the Dutch research infrastructure provider can uh, can mean for researchers. Um, and I think that it, it'll also give you a kind of an impression of the potentially similar types of centers that exist um, elsewhere. Um, elsewhere. So is Lodovic like there? Okay, cool. Let's get started. Yes, so like Meyer, uh, Meyer just mentioned, I will tell you a little bit about uh, using the resources at SURF. SURF is this Dutch uh, compute infrastructure provider for research and education. I will tell you a bit about the service we provide, uh, about um, the platform that you will be using itself called SPIDER. And I will also tell a little bit about getting resources like how you can get the resources if you need them uh, but also how this works in europe for a little bit because uh, as i heard that most of the people are not working in the netherlands but maybe at some point you do a phd or a postdoc or maybe even a staff position in the netherlands then it's nice to know how how things work here um so 
My name is Lodewijk and I got my PhD in physics uh, a year ago where I worked for a detector that is uh, taking a lot of data. So I was doing a lot of uh, analysis on these data sets. And I really like the technical aspect of this. So now I'm working for SURF where I actually help the scientists do their job on our infrastructure. So th this is uh, you. So what is SURF specifically? Um, well, SURF is a, a cooperative company and we uh, we have in our cooperation the uh, the scientific institutes so universities we have medical centers research institutes that are not affiliated with a specific university so think of a national laboratory uh, but also vocational uh, uh, educational institutes and we provide to them uh, the IT infrastructure and services that they need to do their jobs so what does this mean? It means that SURF itself, we are a service provider. So we have the ICT infrastructure. For example, we have our own data center. And in this data center, we run certain services that our users uh, use to do their job. Um, but that's not the only thing we do. We also try to innovate because there's a lot of things happening constantly in the IT world. Things, uh, new, new things become available, old things become outdated. So we try to keep up with what is happening and make sure that what people are asking for, we can actually make this available to them and provide it in such a way. And uh, this is part of our innovation. So um, as, a, as a part of this, we also want to uh, share the knowledge because researchers in, in particular, they don't have time to, to read all these things and keep up with all the things that happen in the IT world. So they just want to do their research. And we are available to give them uh, training and support to, to get to the things that they want to do to get their research goals. So our goal is to accelerate the researchers. Oh, whoops, did I accidentally mess it up? Uh, there it is. Sorry, I messed something up on my laptop. Um, our goal is to accelerate the researchers' work uh, by collaborating with them and providing them IT support. So what kind of services does SURF uh, provide? Well, we try to provide as many IT services that are available. So we have compute services and data services. That is what you will be using today. So uh, the SPIDER platform is one of our compute services with a very big component of data services because this platform is specifically built for handling large data sets. Um, and for that, we also need a good internet connection internally in the data center, but also towards the outside world, because maybe you want to get some data from a French data center or from a Canadian data center, and you don't want to use a normal internet line because those are relatively slow. So we make sure that there are uh, spe special connections between the, the scientific data centers. Uh, other things we can provide is, for example, uh, this in this uh, research cloud is that we have agreements with these market parties, Google, Amazon, uh, you name it, where if you have a, uh, if you want to use their clouds, you can request a grant through a grant at SURF to use their resources. We will, of course, uh, look at this re uh, request and see if it's, uh, if it makes sense, if it's a valid, if it's merit based. Um, and then we will grant you access to this cloud through SURF. And then it's, it will be paid by the Dutch government or the NWO. Um, so today you'll be using this, this spider platform, which is specifically made for large data volumes. Um, so you can think of, well, satellites, of course, Earth, Earth observation is one good example. But we also have uh, telescopes, ground-based telescopes or space-based telescopes that take a lot of data, uh, sequencers that is uh, genomics, human genomes are gigantic. They need to be, they're really big data, but you can cut this up and then uh, in parallel process this on a platform uh, such as Spider. So what uh, this platform is supposed to, the problem it's supposed to solve is that you have large data volumes, you cut the data sets in tiny pieces, and then you parallel uh, process them. And this uh, for Spider, it starts at a few terabytes and goes up to uh, really petabytes worth of data. Um, but it's, this platform is really meant for steady workflow. So you have a satellite that's constantly taking data. You have a telescope that's constantly taking data. 
and you are every day, every week or every month, you're doing some kind of processing workflow that gives you a data product that you can then further use as a scientist. And we've set this, uh, this platform up so that you can actually use it for international collaboration. Because for example, uh, supercomputers are generally used by if like a single user wants to do a big simulation, but the spider platform is really set up that you have a, a, a collaboration within your own country or within uh, multiple countries, and they can all work on spider uh, and share the data and share the same software. So here are some examples of the bigger users of the data processing platforms that we have at CERF. So the biggest one is CERN, the, uh, the particle accelerator in Geneva. They by far use the most uh, calculation. So core hours, they use about almost 80 million core hours each year. And they have almost 50 petabytes worth of data stored just in the Netherlands alone. Their storage is distributed over the whole world, but this is just for uh, one single country. But other uh, maybe more familiar uh, project is the Tropomi satellite. They use uh, over 10 million core hours each year. But they have, uh, well, still many petabytes of data, but not as much as, as CERN. Um, but so these are the really big users. Uh, maybe you're wondering, like, how much uh, should I be having before I can use Spider? Well, if you have about 10 terabytes of data, then uh, this is uh, like big enough to use Spider. And if you think I'm going to use about 200 to 500,000 core hours, these are kind of the numbers that uh, you can start using Spider. We have different platforms for smaller amounts, of course, uh, like in the research cloud, you can get your a specific machine to just work for you instead of using a bigger uh, platform like Spider, because we have a multiple, uh, like hundreds of users on Spider and on the on the supercomputer as well. So there are always options. Uh, we can help you out, do your work. So when do you want to uh, use, come to a national infrastructure like surf or maybe there's one in the country that you're working well you say you have a, you say something like well my data is really large and complex or it doesn't fit on my laptop how am i going to calculate it it will take maybe a few years to run it on my on my laptop at that point or maybe even a little bit before that point you want to start talking to your uh, it service provider and see what they can do for you and in surf specifically we even have a team that can help you uh, visualize your data if it's really complex and you it's really big. So there's always um, there's there's a lot of support and many options for you. And uh, specifically for maybe in the future, if you end up in the Netherlands as a researcher, you can get through the NWO or through Surf. You can get resources, and for Surf specifically, we have small grants. So for big grants, which are a little bit more complex to get. This is the full budget that you can get, like not the US, like for the full country, we have over 2 billion, uh, 1 billion uh, core hours that we can allocate and almost 60 petabytes of storage for this year alone. And this grows every year. But for the smaller requests, so you have a few terabytes and you want to still calculate it because it doesn't fit on your hard drive. Uh, we have the small requests that usually if if you, uh, if you make a sensible uh, grant proposal, they will be granted in a few days or maybe two weeks, and they will be made available as soon as possible to you. So if you're in the Netherlands, uh, go uh, go to SURF or NWO. Um, but of course, not everyone is in the Netherlands. So I did a little bit of looking like what else is there in uh, that I uh, could easily find. So here's a, a few things in, in, for example, Canada or Denmark. Greece, mostly Europe, um, how this works is you usually go to either this uh, uh, IT support uh, group, like uh, uh, these, these, these uh, institutes, you ask them for resources, or you can go to the European Union, because through the European, uh, 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 the EC, you can get also onto uh, HPC uh, uh, resources like uh, now we have this uh, project called euro hpc where in europe we're trying to kind of uniform 
all the different HBC centers, or at least the, the money flows that you can uh, use them as a European citizen much more easily as a researcher than how it is going currently. But still, uh, if you need something, try to find your national IT provider because we really want to help you. And there is, in most countries, there is money on the table to be used. See if they have resources be available. And if this is not, uh, if you can't really find it that easily, ask your PI. The staff scientists, they are much more experienced in this and they should also know how to uh, get these resources to you. And as a small example, when I was searching for all these institutes on the Danish website for the Danish Institute, on the just on the front page, they had this call for applications for national HPC resources. So uh, if you need these resources, go to uh, one of these institutes and, and just ask for them and they will uh, they will help you out. So I hope this helps you too and that you will uh, use the spider platform uh, good uh, well today and have fun at the uh, at the summer school for the rest of the time that you're here